Good night, Papua New Guinea, and welcome back to another episode of Sports Scene. It's a pleasure to have you join me tonight on the show. Well, tonight on the show, I have my co-host, Peter Pusal. Peter, welcome to the show. Thanks, How are man. you doing? Thank you. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, it's been a great uh, week for me, and I'm getting excited about, for the sports that are coming up, and also the guests we have on the show. Oh, well... We have a quite good number of guests that is coming up, but before we do that, we will look at our weekend scoreline. I'll allow Peter to do the honors. Thanks, Dave. Well, the weekend uh, scoreline starts with the NRL round eight results. Rabbitohs 20 defeated the Penrith Panthers 18. Brisbane Broncos 26 over the Parramatta Eels 16. Cronulla Sharks 33 over the Canterbury Bulldogs 20. Cowboys 18, Newcastle Knights 16. Dolphins 28 over the Titans 26. Manly Seagulls 22, West Tigers 16. Roosters 27 defeated the Dragons 26. And the Melbourne Storm 30 over the Warriors 22. We'll go into the Post Plus Cup Round 6 results. Winner Manly Seagulls 28 defeated Northern Pride 8. North Devils 42 over the Mackay Cutters 16. Burley Bears 46, defeating the PG Hunters 20 points. Redcliffe Dolphins 40, Ipswich Jets 12, Tweedhead Seagulls 28, Townsville Blackhawks 26, Sunshine Coast Falcons 34, South Logan Magpies 16, and Brisbane Tigers 32 over the Western Clydesdales 28. On to the Super Rugby results for round 9, we had the Chiefs 50 over the Fiji Drua 17, Open Blues 55. Big winners over the Waratahs, 21 points. Crusaders, 43, defeating the Melbourne Rebels, 27. And Western Force, 30, defeating the Highlanders, 17 points. See, still sticking with uh, Rugby Union, we had the World Rugby Sevens Series, Challenger Series, taking place in Stellenbosch, South Africa over the weekend, Dave. And uh, I'll just read out the men's results. PNG lost to Hong Kong, 26-5. Uh, PNG just narrowly lost to Chile in 2019 uh, and then also unfortunately we went down to Italy 33 points to 12. In the women's results, uh, the Palais, the PNG Palais lost to Hong Kong 44-7, uh, but we had a win. The PNG Palais defeated Paraguay 10-5 Paraguay, and unfortunately we lost to Belgium 27 points to 12. Uh, we've got some more results. <laughs> Can't miss them. Uh, just for the men, uh, 26 defeated Korea 22, and last match there, PNG 17, Zimbabwe 40. Uh, China in the women's results, China 46 big winners over PNG Palais nil, and we also lost that final match 48-7. Uh, PNG uh, lost to Thailand. Pacific Netball Series, so we've got a lot of sports uh, yeah. coming up uh, Definitely. That, that took place. So. Uh, PNG is taking part in a netball series on the Gold Coast at the moment this week and uh, we played Samoa in the first game, lost 48-66 and then we played uh, Malawi and we lost 64-49. Finally, we got the final results here for the Capital Rugby Union Round 3 that took place on the weekend. Nova 27 defeated University Piggy 17, Brothers 10 defeated Harlequins nil. Crusaders 10 defeated Defense 5, and the MBB Marlins 16 defeated the Valley Hunters 10. Dave, those are the weekend results. Thanks, Pete, for giving us a rundown on what took place over the weekend. Well, we'll take a short break now, but before we do that, here's what's coming up next on the show. We have Ryan Pini, also we have Paul Bonista, and joining us later on will be the president of the PNG Boxing Union, Dr. Gideon Candino. That's all happening here on Sports Scene. Stay with us. Welcome back, viewers, to Sports Scene. All right, it's a pleasure to have you tuned in if you just joined us. All right, we have on the show tonight is one of Papua New Guinea's most decorated athletes who represented the country in the sport of swimming at the Pacific Commonwealth and the Olympic Games, as well as the FINA Championship. We have tonight on the show is none other than Ryan Pini. Ryan, it's a pleasure to have you on the show tonight. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much for being here. It's, uh, it's a privilege to be able to share my stories and what I'm involved in. 
All right, thank you, Brian. Um, you were recently appointed by the World Anti-Doping Agency Athlete Council as one of the chair. Uh, firstly, before we go straight into our questions, uh, we just want to congratulate you on that appointment. And uh, we will, well, we will ask Ryan a few questions then. Um, just explain a bit about your role in the anti uh, World Anti-Doping Agency Athlete Council. Yeah, so the, the Athlete Council, um, like a lot of um, the, the sporting world, there is a, a very athlete-centred uh, approach to a lot of this. And, and you know, the, the organisations are doing a lot of work for sports and for the athletes, so it's really important to be able to have that athlete voice in there um, so that athletes can feel comfortable that the right decisions are being made at that level. Uh, so World Anti-Doping Agency is, is a, a very important part of the process for athletes. Uh, we, we're keeping sport clean. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to make uh, sport fair for everyone so that um, yeah, it, everyone's on the equal playing field. So WADA for me uh, has been uh, a big part of my journey from my uh, elite part of my uh, journey as an athlete. And uh, coming into this, um, yeah, we, we gather feedback from athletes and we, we produce it to the World Anti-Doping Agency and vice versa. We get the information from that top level and bring it down to athletes to let them know what's, what's new, what's happening in, in the world of anti-doping. So it's a, it's a huge role um, and, and certainly looking forward to it. So you've also have, you also have another position that you've been appointed to and that's Chef de Mission for Paris. Uh, for Team PNG, to tell us how that's been for you and what it involves. Yeah, so Paris, um, a little over a year away, and we've got um, a number of athletes who will be vying for their qualifications uh, in that lead up. So there will be, each sport has very different qualification processes, um, and their aim is to obviously go through, make sure that they can get to those qualification stand, uh, stages. Um, but most likely it won't be until uh, probably June next year is when we'll find out exactly who, who makes the team um, based on universality places. Um, our boxing team have, have probably uh, one of the greatest opportunities being at the Pacific Games as a direct qualifier. This is, um, it doesn't happen very often, so this is a really, really important piece that they will be vying for. Um, what are some of the, just uh, in terms of consequences for athletes that don't uh, pass the drug test or that are caught, what are some of the consequences that uh, he or she will face? Yeah, well, depending on the, on the charge, and there's there's a lot of different, it, it's a quite quite a complex world, um, which is makes it all more important for athletes to be there because um, it is it is quite complex. So there's there's usually... Different aspects of it, there's intentional doping. So someone that has uh, intentionally doped to be able to perform better. Um, and that is a much higher charge. Uh, you'll be banned from the sports for uh, a long period of time. There's unintentional doping. So that is something where you might have taken a supplement that was uh, contaminated. Um, you will still test positive um, and you'll probably be given a two or four year ban depending on, on the severity but you might be able to um, you know, take that to um, the courts and then uh, take it to the next step and reduce that ban. Finally, before we uh, let you go, Ryan, uh, you're, you're the country's greatest swimmer ever, and now you're retired and you've got so many roles you play. Do you still, are you still involved in swimming in the country? Yeah, yeah, they're still involved. Um, definitely, we've got our national championships on uh, this weekend. So we will have um, athletes vying for, for positions at the Pacific Games, Commonwealth Youth Games uh, and World Championships, which is in Fukuoka in July um, this year. So really good opportunities for our athletes to, to qualify. Um, you know, I think a lot of sports really struggled through COVID and uh, swimming was certainly one of them. Um, having a swimming pool to try and access um, and get, get uh, younger athletes there it was a real challenge. But it's really uh, positive to see the changes that have been made um, and the, the swimming club coming through. And we've got more, more swimmers swimming at this national championships than we have had in the, the previous few years. So that's a positive sign. Um, you know, that next nine year challenge now, I think is a really good opportunity for um, all of our sporting clubs, um, not just swimming, but to, to really challenge themselves to, to make sure they have a really strong team by, by nine. For me, I would love 
for another role model to come through and, and be that that person I you know once was as an athlete and and that's the next next the next person and, and there's there's people out there that can do that and um, be that positive change in the country for sure. All right, uh, Ryan, it was a pleasure to have you on the show tonight. Uh, we wish you all the best in your future endeavors, and we hope to see you again on the show going forward. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to coming back. All right, uh, we'll take a short break, and we'll return with more on Sports Scene. Good night, viewers, and welcome back to Sports Scene. All right, we have on the show tonight is the national coach of the PNG Paralympic Committee, Paul Banista. Paul, thanks for joining us on the show tonight. David, thanks for the opportunity to, uh, to join the show. So. All right, uh, before we get things rolling, uh, just introduce yourself and give a background details of your career so our viewers uh, have an idea, a specific idea of who we're talking to. Uh, I've been involved through mainly the throws, uh, part of athletics. But recently, since 2018, 2019, I've become part of the para uh, athletics side of it. And more recently, uh, as in last year, I was asked by uh, Peter Curtin and uh, others to become involved in the uh, para athletics or the Papua New Guinean Paralympic Committee um, and become on board as the sports performance director. So that covers also coaching, but also other things in relation to organising the Paralympic side of uh, PNG's Paralympic uh, Committee. Um, I'm ably also assisted by Susan Sierra from High Performance. She performs a, a very important role with respect to the administration and such. All right, I thank you very much, Paul, for that uh, intel on yourself. Uh, just going straight into our question, uh, we understand that the PNG Paralympic Committee will have an hectic here this year. Uh, what are some of the sporting federations that you will be working closely with uh, to strengthen ties going forward? The PNG Paralympic Committee, I want to get on board to uh, start looking at athletics, uh, powerlifting, badminton, table tennis, volleyball, swimming, um, and other sports where we can establish a, or re-establish, I should say, reboot the situation so we can become active working towards 2032 uh, in Brisbane, the Olympics and Paralympics, but also the Olympics that'll be between there. That's Paris in 2024, uh, Los Angeles in 2028, and also the Pacific Games that go along with that. So we want to re-establish and reboot the dominance and prominence of uh, the Paralympic Committee. All right, as we mentioned, that you will be signing an MOU, I understand, with uh, National Federation. So just uh, give an update on the significance of that MOU. So they, they were spoken about, uh, not with the, the federations yet, and that's something that I, as the performance coordinator, have to uh, talk to the other federations uh, in relation to this. This is something coming out of the, uh, the Assembly last week, but also the uh, Oceania Paralympic Committee and International Paralympic Committee. We had some workshops last week which really moved us forward in relation to our governance and other things we need to do to develop Paralympics within, within the Pacifica, but also within clearly PNG. Um, with PNG's large population, we, we need to... There's so many hidden gems out there with respect to athletics. Um, and also para sports that we need to uh, ID those and create pathways for those uh, young men and women that are out there to uh, uh, become great representatives of Papua New Guinea. Having that uh, been said, how many athletes in terms of para athletes do we have right now uh, preparing for major upcoming international tournaments or events set for this year? So there's... 25 at the moment athletics uh, athletes that are uh, included in our team. There are four coaches, uh, some established coaches there. There's also some new coaches. Uh, I should say now we're always looking for, for new coaches to come on board, uh, especially uh, females. Uh, it's lovely to get the ladies on board with respect to interactions with the female uh, athletes that we do have. So 20... Um, yeah, 20 to 25 athletes, not only in Port Moresby, but also in uh, Mount Hagen, uh, Ley, uh, and there's also some athletes in Kimbo. 
but we're always very, very happy to, as I said before, identify and also create pathways for athletes, para-athletes in other uh, provinces of PNG. About these athletes, coming back to these 25 athletes, uh, will they be attending any lead-up games between this month going forward towards the Pacific Games? We're hoping that maybe in October there will be an opportunity to go to Solomon's uh, for reclassification. Um, that's uh, classifying with para sports. You have to have your athletes classified depending on their disability and, uh, and in relation to how they can compete against each other. So October there is currently planned, and it came from the workshop last week, that there may be a reclassification plus the new track will be put down um, in Honiara by then, and it's hoped that those um, those athletes can all be classified internationally but also compete. So that's one event, but also if that doesn't come uh, forward or doesn't happen, we also have intentions at the moment to try and get to Australia to get some uh, regional championships. Uh, Mackay hold a championship, and we're hoping maybe to be able to take our athletes there That'd be the whole squad or the squad that's been endorsed um, moving forward for the uh, Pacific Games. All right, just before we go, Paralympic, one of the uh, special sporting codes in Papua New Guinea. What are some of the visions that you plan to achieve and where do you see yourself in the next five years going forward? I suppose the vision going forward is to, to build on the great silver medal that was achieved um, previously by para Athletics. Um, at the at the uh, 2008 um, Olympics, Paralympics, um, to build on that and to have a team. Uh, the vision is to have a team for 2028 that is a sizable team. That's, that's a team that can be developed leading into 2032. That's why talent identification now needs to start because um, kids that are aged between 12 or 13 or 14 now need to be developed and brought along because they'll be, you know, early 20s when they go to the Brisbane uh, Paralympics in uh, 2032 in Brisbane. Um, so we need to start identifying and developing those uh, athletes now, but not only the athletes, but the coaches and support staff. So it's a very much uh, a, a team environment that you need to, although it's an individual sport um, with respect to para-athletics or so Paris swimming such but one thing I really want to try and push also is to get a capacity to have a para team um, you can have wheelchair um, football you can have other sports that are team based um, PNG has a great uh, history of being strong in team sports and that's something I would like to transfer over to the para side of it and see dominance um, and strong uh, representation through that side of it not only through the individual sports, but also through the team sports, which I think PNG has got a lot to uh, contribute in that way. Well, uh, if there's nothing else, I thank you very much, Paul, for joining us on the show tonight. It was a pleasure, and I wish you all the best with your team going forward into this year. Thank you, for everyone. Thank you. There you have it, the, the national coach of the PNG Paralympic, Mr. Paul Banista. Well, we will take a short break now, and when we return, we will bring you more on sports. Stay with us. Welcome back to Sports Scene. All right, joining me and Peter on the show tonight is the president of the PNG Boxing Union Inc., Dr. Gideon Candino. Doctor, good night, and how are you doing? Thank you. It's been a pretty, pretty hectic weekend, so it's just finalizing our selections, but pretty good. All right. Um, we understand there was a uh, championship held on the weekend. Uh, just give us an insight on how uh, it ran or it progressed through and uh, selections went about for the national team. Yeah, the PNG uh, Boxing Union had our annual uh, national championships in what must be over the weekend. Uh, we had seven associations out of the 12 registered that turned up. Uh, it's quite disappointing that uh, strong associations like Bougainville and um, Rabaul and Lay didn't come for, for various reasons. What about those associations that did not take part? What happens to their 
good boxers? Do they miss out completely or do they have another opportunity to get in? Uh, our selectors met yesterday at midday and they um, f um looking through the weight categories that we were not strong in and looking back at the, the past Pacific Games in 2019 and where where our medals uh, were won. Uh, there's two boxes from Bougainville that didn't come, but they've, they've, they took part in various um, events, including the pro -Am event that happened in Narawa two weeks ago. So they, they, they're also in the mix. Um, the, the list uh, will be finalized um, tomorrow, Friday, and then passed on to the PNG Olympic Committee. Prior to the Pacific Games, uh, will there be any lead-up tournaments that these boxers will be attending just to, you know, get the feel there and prepare themselves? Ye yes, um, we've prepared a budget that's uh, well over 300,000 uh, passed through the Olympic Committee last week, Tuesday. Um, that in involves having um, training camps uh, and high performance center in Philippines we, uh, in conjunction with the F Philippines um, um, Sports Federation of Foundation in a um, place called um, Baguio. They have a um, <coughs> high altitude training camp there. And then there's another camp in Cebu. Uh, there'll be a fact-finding tour by our general secretary Martin Leary uh, in the next two weeks. We just f finalized that, and we, because we're going to have a large, we're going to have a large group. Um, this Pacific Games is different um, for various reasons. IBA and IOC, IBA is International Boxing Association, yeah. and the International Olympic Committee is IOC, have not um, come eye to eye on Olympic selections, so. In the Pacific Games, we'll be having two concurrent competitions. The Paris 2024 Olympics uh, selection, uh, as well as the, the Pacific Games per se. And that was Dr. Gideon Kendino, president of the PNG Boxing Unit Incorporated, to give us a rundown of the national championships that took place over the weekend. And now we will go to Dave for the weekend previews. Oh yeah, uh, coming up on the weekend previews, we will start with round 10 of the Super Rugby. We'll see the Hurricanes taking on the Brown Bees in the first game. Also the Fiji and Drewers will take on the Blues. Chiefs taking on the Crusaders. The Waratahs taking on Highlanders. Mohana Pacifica taking on Melbourne Rebels. And the Reds taking on the Western Fours. For NRL round nine, We'll see the Sharks taking on the Cowboys. That's happening shortly after this. Also on Friday, we see the Eels taking on the Newcastle Knights, as well as the Broncos taking on the Rabbitohs. On Saturday, the Raiders will go up against the Dolphins. Sea Eagles will take on Titans and the Penrith Panthers going up against the West Tigers. On Sunday, we'll see the Warriors taking on the Roosters and the Dragons taking on Bulldogs to wrap up round 9. Also on the Oast Plus round 7 draws, we'll see the PNG Hunters taking on Mackay Cutters here at the National Football Stadium, the home of the Hunters. Also the Black Ox will take on Magpies, Dolphins taking on Falcons, the Clydesdales taking on Hipswich Jets, the North Devils going up against the Northern Pride, the Queenstown Capras taking on the Winam Manly Seagulls and the Belly Bears taking on East Tigers. The Capital Rugby Union round for draws Saturday will see the Kramer Asenko Brothers going up against Crusaders and the fans taking on the Valley Hunters. Then on Sunday we'll see the University Piggies taking on Wanderers and Nova taking on Valley Hunters. Well, that was our weekend previews for what's coming up at this weekend. But if there's any stories or sporting events that you would like us to come and cover, please contact us on the following details here on the screen. Phone us on 
email sportsin at mtv.com.pg or visit us at Level 2 Garden City Morocco. Unfortunately, our time has caught up with us. This is where we have to say goodbye. Before we go, Peter, is there anything that you would like to say? Yeah, we've had two really good guests on tonight and uh, hopefully they've given you viewers a lot of uh, good information and we'll do it again next week. Well, there you have it. Meet us same time, same place next week here on Sports Scene.